welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. <laughs> I've had a lot of requests lately to do a tutorial on the Tunisian crochet stitch. This is also known as the Afghan stitch and it's a little bit different than the typical crochet stitches you've done. So I thought today we would try a sampler and everybody knows that the kind of samplers I like to do when I'm trying out a new stitch is a dishcloth. <laughs> so a couple words on the hook you're going to need. This is a traditional crochet hook. It's a size 5 millimeter, and you can make this tutorial using a regular crochet hook. But if you really like the Tunisian crochet stitch, you're going to want to get yourself an afghan hook. This is a 5 millimeter afghan hook. So it looks like a knitting needle because it's got that blocker on the end, so that's so all of your loops don't fall off on the every other part of a row, but I'll get to that. And it's got a hook at the other end of it. And this allows you to create larger pieces in the Tunisian crochet stitch. What's that stitch look like? Well, <laughs> this is a sample of the basic Tunisian crochet stitch. This creates a really different texture than your standard slip stitch or single crochet. You'll notice that it's a pretty decent woven fabric. You can't really see through it. And the back almost looks like the underside of a knit sweater. There's that nice little ribbing or what they call a knit stitch or a garter stitch in knitting terms. So this, this is a cool crochet stitch and it's not hard. I'm going to take you through it and you're going to have a dishcloth just like me right at the end of this tutorial. So without further ado, grab your crochet hook and don't worry, you can do this one. I've even done it with a shorter hook, but if you like it, make sure to invest in one of these really funky afghan hooks because you'll be glad you did. <laughs> so grab your hooks, grab some cotton yarn, and let's head to the craft table and learn a new stitch. For today's dishcloth, I'm using a four-ply worsted weight cotton yarn. This is an 80 gram ball. I can probably get two dishcloths from it. I need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle so that I can weave in all of my little ends, and I'm using a five millimeter crochet afghan hook, or an afghan crochet hook. It's a long hook resembling a knitting needle with a hook on one end and a stopper on the other. You can use five millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, or six millimeter. And once you've got that, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Make sure your slip knot can move around comfortably on your hook and it's not too tight or too loose. And we're going to begin by chaining 22. Once you've got a chain of 22, so a chained length of 22, this is where things begin to diverge from typical crochet. Your base foundation chain number will be the same as the stitch count number for each successive row. So this is different than in regular crochet. We've begun with 22 chains in our foundation chain row. At the end of row one of our first Tunisian stitch row, we're going to have 22 stitches. And this is how we achieve that. Look for the first loop from your hook. So that's the first chain from your hook. You're going to skip it. Instead, you're going to slip your hook through the next stitch, almost as though you were going to slip stitch Wrap your yarn, pull up a loop, leave it on your hook. Go to the next chain, insert your hook, wrap your yarn, pull up a loop. The next stitch, insert your hook, wrap your yarn, pull up a loop. You're going to skip the first chain from the hook, but you're going to pull up a loop onto your afghan hook in each of the chains across your foundation chain row. So just steadily work along, <laughs> pick up a loop in each chain, and when you get to the very end, you want to stop and count all of the loops on your hook. You began with a chain of 22, chain length, so you want to make sure you have 22 loops sitting on your rafghan hook when you're done, picking up all the loops in your foundation chain row. 
Okay, you should have 22 loops on your hook. You've pulled up a loop in every single one of those loops, except for the chain immediately after, like the first chain from the hook. So you, you skip the first chain, but you pulled up a loop in each successive chain in your foundation chain row. Count them, you should have 22. Here's where we crochet. You're going to wrap your yarn around your hook, pull it back through that first loop, so be very careful, and that's the odd loop on every row. So the first loop is always treated a little differently. You wrap and pull through one only. But here's what you do for the rest of the row. It might help to scooch up your loops a little bit. You want to try and remember to be as light as you can or as as sort of um, relaxed so that you don't end up with tight loops on your on your afghan hook because you want to be able to have them sliding around nice and comfortably. Wrap your yarn around your hook and you're going to pull back through two. One, two. Wrap your yarn, pull back through two. There's two. Wrap your yarn, pull back through two. And this is all you do for the rest of this row going backwards. You wrap, pull back through two. Wrap, pull back through two. Wrap, pull back through two. When you get back down to the last two loops on your hook, treat them the same, wrap and pull back through two. So you want to do that until you're left with only one loop remaining on your hook and then you're kind of back to what looks like a regular crochet project. So this is why I say there's an interesting crossover between knitting and crochet here. Every row requires you to, in one direction, have all the loops on your hook and then at the end of the other direction, you've got them all off again. But it creates this really nifty flat raised looking stitch. So you've got this flat set going this way and then this sort of loop, loop going vertically in the other direction. But once we get a few more rows in, that'll be much more defined. So there's no chaining one, there's no turning chains here. This is sort of another difference between regular crochet and Tunisian crochet. But you always skip that first stitch or that first loop from the hook. So while on a sort of foundation chain row the first chain is a little more obvious, this is the one you skip from now on. So it's pretty much the stitch that runs directly below the loop on your hook. So you skip that. You slip your hook through the next vertical stitch, or vertical loop, wrap, and pull up a loop in that vertical loop. Find the next vertical stitch, vertical loop, slip your hook through it, wrap, and pull up a new loop on your hook. So it looks something like this. Find the next vertical one, slip your hook through it, wrap, and pull up a new loop on your hook. And that's what you have to do across for your second row. So find each vertical loop or vertical stitch, slip your hook underneath it, wrap your yarn, and pull up a new loop on your hook. At the end of this row, you should still have 22 loops on your hook. All right, I have picked up a loop in each one of those vertical stitches, or vert the vertical part of each stitch from the previous row. Your work's going to want to curl a little bit, so don't worry about it. But you also want to make sure that you can sort of squeeze your loops together, pull them apart. It should be able to move around fairly comfortably on your afghan hook um, because motion and movement of your, easy movement of your loops is very important when you're working the Tunisian crochet stitch. Now we're going to do the same thing all over again. So here's your first loop, that's the first stitch we're going to work. Wrap your yarn around your hook and work that first loop only. So just, just the first loop. That will keep your work straight. And then we repeat the process. Wrap, pull back through two loops, and wrap, pull back through two loops, and that's all you do. Heading backwards. Wrap through two, 
Wrap through two. Wrap through two. <laughs> All right, remember you want to wrap and go through two loops until you've gotten all the way back to just a single loop left on your hook, but you don't work that loop. You just, that's it. You've got one loop left and you're done that row. And this is the pattern pretty much from here on out. So I'm going to talk, walk you through row three and then I'll show you how to easily count your rows and then I'll leave you on your own to finish the sort of the main grunt work of your dishcloth. So remember, we skip the first stitch. The first stitch is sort of recognizable by the sort of straight vertical up and down loop here. So you skip the first one and you always start with the second one. Slip your hook through that loop and pick up a new loop on your hook. Go to the next vertical loop, slip your hook through it, wrap your yarn, pull up a new loop, and so on. Make sure you pick up a loop in every single one of those vertical stitch parts throughout your entire row. When you get to the end, count your loops. You should still have 22. And then we'll work it off again. I'm almost at the end. Remember that last stitch is the last vertical loop. So don't forget that last one. And then stop, count, make sure you have 22 loops on your hook. Your work should sort of be hanging fairly straight up and down off your afghan hook. Then we work backwards. Wrap, work the first stitch only. Don't mix it up with another one. You want to only work that first stitch. Then wrap and work sets of two. All the way back to the beginning. Okay, before I turn you loose, I'm going to show you how to count your rows. You're going to want to do 22 rows in total before we put on a cute little border. And this is how you count. This is so much easier than regular crochet. Every single row has a vertical line. And you can see that fairly clearly. It looks like you've got little, little boxes or grids sort of running along on your fabric. So I'll just set my hook out of the way here. We've done three rows. And you can tell we've done three rows because there are three vertical lines all on top of each other. And that's how you count your rows. Look for the vertical lines. They start directly above your foundation chain row, which all run parallel to, let's say, the ground, if you're holding it down way, or perpendicular to your vertical lines. And you just count your vertical lines. There's three vertical lines. We've done three rows. Each row consists of putting all your loops on and then taking all your loops off. And that's all there is to the basic Tunisian crochet stitch. So go ahead, let's work 22 rows of Tunisian crochet stitch so that we can make ourselves a cute little dishcloth. It's a great sampler size and it's something useful when you're done. And once you've got your 22 rows in, I'll show you how to work a simple single crochet border around the whole thing. Add a little hook and you can put it directly into your kitchen sink. <laughs> or give it to somebody who's looking for a nifty new dishcloth. All right, I've completed 22 rows of the Tunisian crochet stitch and you can count them by counting the vertical lines. So there's one vertical line per row or you can count the sort of little arrows in between but I find it easier to count the little vertical lines. So that way you know there's 22 and now all you have to do in order to finish your dishcloth is work a basic row of single crochet around the whole square. And I'm going to show you the best stitch part to pick up in order to work the single crochet across the top. So you don't have to chain the one on your hook, this loop on your hook. You're just going to continue from here. So there's no chaining. Pick up the first vertical stitch after the one directly below the loop on your hook, just as though you were going to Continue the Tunisian crochet stitch. Pick up a loop. And now single crochet. Wrap and go through both. Go to the next stitch, so the next vertical loop. Stick your hook in there. Pick up a loop. Oops. <laughs> and single crochet. Grab the next vertical stitch, 
pick up a loop from it, and single crochet. So what's going to happen is you're going to get sort of this nice edge effect that you've already got worked up the one side, curves across into the top, and you're just going to work by picking up a loop just like you would in each vertical stitch and then single crocheting it with the loop that's on your hook. So you're no longer carrying loops on your hook, you're doing the old-fashioned single crochet crochet stitch. So go ahead, work across the top of your dishcloth doing that, and then we'll get to the other side. So the last single crochet across the top of your dishcloth is that last vertical loop on the very edge there. Work that, and now you can kind of turn your work. And another nice thing about the Tunisian crochet stitch is now we're working down the side of our dishcloth, but you've already got a loop to work into all the way down. So you don't need to turn or turn and chain. If you want to create a, a perfect corner, you can work a second single crochet into that side stitch. So that, that stitch you just worked a single crochet into, work another one. That'll give you just a little bit of turn. And now you can pick up and work a single crochet into each of those vertical loops down the side of your dishcloth. See that? Nice and easy. One single crochet per end of row. All right, I'm just coming up to the bottom. There is the first chain that I made when I started the whole thing. So I'm going to work a single crochet into that space, and I'm going to work a second single crochet into that same chain so that I have a nice little turning edge. And I'm going to work over top of that short tail. But here we are now on the foundation chain row, so same thing as the side we just worked. You've got a loop or a space at the bottom of every single stitch, see that space right there? It's right in between your two vertical lines that you can stick your hook in and work a regular single crochet. So your, your work does want to roll a little bit, so you're going to have to sort of unroll it. <laughs> Find that space between the two vertical lines. There it is. And just work those little spaces or every sort of chain across the bottom of your dishcloth all the way across. Just coming up in the end, there's the last space I can work. And now we're coming up to sort of the part that turns into the second side. And you'll notice that the side of your dishcloth is what looks like what's normally the top of a single crocheted piece of fabric. So this is just the easiest thing to work single crochet around. So the first or the the last stitch and the first stitch or the corner bit that you're going to work is this what looks like a real stitch because technically it is. <laughs> you're going to work two single crochets into that stitch. That'll give you that nice little turning corner and then work a single crochet in each stitch, literally, up the side of your dishcloth. That'll bring you up to the very beginning of your border row, and we're going to put on a little loop for a hook, and then we'll be all done. So work a single crochet in each stitch up the side, the last side of your dishcloth. Alright, I'm just getting to the end of my last side, and this is the piece that sort of turned into the top row. So this is the first single crochet we created, this one right here. Um, but this last stitch, we're just going to work a single crochet into it. But instead of working two, we're just going to slip stitch now into that first corner, or that first stitch I should say that we made of the border row. So the first single crochet of the border row, we're just going to slip stitch into it and that's going to finish off our border nice and neatly. There you go.
Now you can steam block this, obviously, if you want to flatten it and make it look nice and tidy. Or if you're just going to throw it right into the sink and start using it, it will uh, loosen itself out. And the next time you wash it in the washing machine, uh, obviously you don't have to steam block <laughs> your dishcloths. Uh, but if you're giving it away as a gift, you can do that. But before we finish, let's put a cute little loop on it, just so you can hang it. You're going to chain 10. And once you've chained 10, slip stitch right back into the same stitch. There we go, for that simple little loop. Grab your scissors. Snip your yarn. And just fasten off. There you go, tight, nice and tight. Now you can grab your yarn needle and just Take that end, flip your, your, your dishcloth to the back, and you can tell it's the back because you've got this sort of nice knobby knit effect on the back. And you can just pick up all the little stitches across the back and weave your tail through it. But that's it. <laughs> Ta-da! A Tunisian crochet stitch dishcloth. This really does make a great dishcloth because there aren't too many holes in it, so it makes a nice, strong, scrubby material. And it just feels really cool. There's lots of really nifty uses for the Tunisian stitch, and I will definitely get to more tutorials using it down the road. And like I say, if you haven't gotten yourself an Afghan hook, then you should think about investing in one. They're really no more expensive than a standard crochet hook, and you can do a lot more nifty things with the long hook, plus it's a cool tool for your collection. So that's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again very soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>